Hey guys, today I'm going to show you some easy tie dye patterns and folding techniques. It's the perfect summer activity that you can do with your whole family. I have several patterns and ideas here and you can change them up based on what colors you use. Let's go. The first technique that we're going to cover is the most popular and most common tie dye pattern, the spiral. You basically create a twist from a starting point in your shirt or fabric with your fingers or with a fork or tweezers. Using a fork or tweezers, you will get a tighter spiral that will produce more white areas in your design and will create a different effect than if you were to use your fingers. The spiral design is one of my absolute favorites. It's perfect for adults, for kids. Everyone in my family loves it. And it's really easy to do. Pick your starting point and then grab a piece of fabric in the middle and then start twisting the fabric. And as you can see here, I'm kind of making sure the pleats stay nice and tight and uniform. And then when you get to the end, it's a little weird, but you just want to wrap the sleeves around and you'll see that you have this spiral. So let's try it with the fork. I use the fork method a lot and it's something that even my littlest kids can do. I like the tighter spiral because I like to see some of the white and it creates a better division of color in the end shirt that you make. Again, I'm kind of working with the pleats and fixing them so I can get them to tightly wrap around. And as you work through the shirt and you do it multiple times, you'll get the feel for what you want it to look like. You're going to just keep twisting and pleating to create your spiral until you get to the sleeves and then you're going to kind of bunch everything together at the end. That's definitely the hardest part. Just because it's easier for a video, I'm actually doing these with dry shirts. Normally I would fold these after soaking them in soda ash to prep for my dye. So folding them dry is definitely more difficult. This will help you get the idea though whenever you go to fold your own shirts. As you can see here, I'm kind of just wrapping around and tucking the sleeves in and then I'm going to grab a couple of rubber bands and I'm going to secure this and I'm going to cross the rubber bands over to create a pie like shape with the rubber bands. Honestly, you can put the rubber bands on however you'd like, but the traditional way to color your spiral tie dye is to create pie like shapes with your color. So creating that space with the rubber bands just makes it easier. You can also use as many or as few rubber bands as you'd like. I find that with a spiral shirt, three to four rubber bands is usually the best idea. I use those pie shapes as a starting point for my colors and I'll usually squirt a little color on there and then go back and finish with a lot more dye once I get my colors laid out. You can tuck in the edges under your rubber bands and then you're ready to go. So with this shirt, I'd put one there and then rotate the colors around to make a rainbow. Here's a picture of how I created the rainbow effect in a shirt with the dyes. You can see the lines that I started with to get my color pattern. And then this is the final result. Seriously, how cool is this shirt? My daughter loves it. Because of the tight spiral, we got that white space and we love it. Next up, we're gonna do the simplest one. It is the scrunch or crumple. And this is literally all you do. You take your shirt, you scrunch it together, wrinkle it, crumple it however you want. It can be neat or messy. And then you put rubber bands on it. And then you cover it with little dots of dye. It's super easy. It's super easy for kids, which is why I love it. Here you can see I used a light blue, a dark blue, a purple, and a pink. And you just go crazy on it. And this is the result. It has a really nice organic effect and the colors bleed together in a really cool way. And you get more white than you'd expect too. Next up is the bullseye design. This is a design that I use all of the time with my toddler boy. He absolutely loves it. For this demonstration, I'm going to show you how I start in the middle to create a traditional bullseye effect. First, you pick up part of the fabric in the middle of the shirt. I've prepped my fingers with a rubber band, and then I'm just going to tightly place the rubber band, creating a little pocket of fabric like that. And then you're going to pleat the shirt and continue to pull it up and gather the fabric and add rubber bands, creating a, basically a long tube out of your shirt. Each rubber band that you place will actually be a section of the bullseye. Just like the spiral, the tighter that you place the rubber bands, the more white definition you'll have in between the layers of your bullseye. 
One of the reasons that I like this shirt is depending on how you pattern the colors, you can get a really easy bullseye or you can get a really cool different effect just by changing up the colors and where you place them on the shirt. We'll get down to the end here. You can see you have a much smaller, more narrow area where the center of your bullseye will be. And then this is the top of the shirt. I like to create a lot of rings on my bullseye, but of course you could bind it and only do a couple at a time. For a traditional bullseye, you will alternate the colors starting at the top, one here, every other. But actually, even though I do that a lot, I like mixing up the colors too. For this shirt, I used green, dark blue, and light blue. So this is three colors and my little guy loved it. The way that I got this effect is by using green to start, then a small band of dark blue, larger band of light blue, larger band of green, and then I repeated. Next, I'm gonna show you how to use that bullseye design to create a really cool rainbow bullseye. Instead of starting in the center of the shirt, this time we're gonna start down here in the corner. I'm gonna pleat the corner of the shirt and tie it off just like I did with the bullseye. I will continue to move up the shirt, pleating it and putting in the tight rubber banded sections to create concentric circles that it start at the corner of the shirt. And you can see here how I'm pleating them to make sure I get a nice white result in between the color there. Pleating is an easy way to make sure that you get a tighter design and offer a little bit more space for your dye to mix and create a little bit more variation in your color. One of the things that I did with this shirt is pretty cool. I'm actually gonna use black, so in the end, it will be a white shirt, but it will be mostly covered in color. And you're not going to quite be able to tell how it was made because there's going to be so much color. And for some reason, when you add black to a design, people sort of wonder how it happened. I think maybe it's because black is not a color you see a lot in tie dye, but uh, you will see how a really cool contrast the black makes with the rainbow. just gonna keep moving up this shirt. Once you get to the sleeves, you kinda wanna just pinch them in to continue the pattern, um, and then maybe use your rubber band to tie the end of that sleeve down so it doesn't pop out. Once I get to the end here, I'm actually going to create more sections, even though I'm going to use black, because there is a couple of areas that I would like to see some of the white pleating folding techniques that I used. So even though the top few sections will be all black, I'm still gonna put those sections in there and create the pleats to give me that effect. Okay, now we're all done. This up here, oh, let's just stick one more on. I don't like sometimes whenever the edges flare, it creates a little bit more mess when you're applying the dye and you really don't want the dye to touch each other. So we're gonna tie that stuff too. So you'll start at the narrow end with the red and then I'm gonna use rainbow order up the sections of the shirt until I get to black and the last few sections will be black and this is the result. This is a great unisex shirt who doesn't love rainbows. And with the black, it definitely can be worn with boys and it's pride month. So show those rainbows. Next up, I'm going to show you traditional accordion folding techniques. This is how you get stripes. So the way that you need to think about this is the opposite of how you get your stripes is how you'll fold. So if you wanna create horizontal folds like we're gonna create here, you're gonna accordion fold the shirt vertically. 
I've turned the shirt sideways so it's easier to fold. And I'm gonna start on the long side with the sleeve and accordion fold the whole length of the shirt before I tie it up. Same thing, the tighter your accordion folds, the more white space that you'll have in your finished shirt. This one is sometimes a little bit more difficult to tie off because the shirt starts to get bigger. But honestly, as you get used to tying them off, it's not too bad. And just like some of the other designs, we're gonna create a big long tube. You'll see here that I started at the ends of my shirt because sometimes when you get these long tubes, the tops and bottoms will try to unravel as you're rubber banding. So sometimes I will tie the top and then the bottom and then I'll go back to the middle. Just like all of the other folding techniques, each section or block where it is banded is a stripe, in this case, a horizontal stripe, and you can color block however you'd like. Depending on where you place your color, that's how your stripes will be broken up. You can see I use several colors in this one, narrow, wide, and I went over the rubber bands with the color, and this is the result that I got. You can see with my tight folding, there's a lot more white space. You can see that the blues go over those rubber banded areas. It turned out really cool. And here's a more traditional color block design with pastels that my daughter absolutely loves. These are wider sections that I used and filled in just each section with one color. Now that we created horizontal stripes, we're gonna try vertical stripes. Vertical stripes are created in the same way you're going to fold the opposite direction. So in this case, we're gonna fold the shirt, excuse me, from the short side or the bottom. You can start at the top or the bottom, and we're gonna fold it in an accordion fashion or like a paper fan the whole way up. And just like before, when you get to the sleeves, you're going to just continue the pattern as best as you can Again, I find that whenever you're folding this, I tie off the sleeve end first because it has a habit of like getting lost and you can tuck that little sleeve in however you want. And then I'll continue to tighten that fold. I'll sometimes go to the other end, tie the other sleeve. Otherwise you get a looser fold at the end than you may like. Same thing, if you want more white, you tie those folds tighter, you put the rubber bands on tighter, and you'll end up with more white in your design. Let's finish tying this one off and I'll show you what I made. I used a lot of colors of dye in this one and I blend them together. I didn't just use the sections and I created a really cool pastel rainbow effect for my toddler daughter. You certainly could just make each section one color, but I decided to mix it up a little bit. As you can see here, I kind of just made a mess and it looks a little crazy, but I wanted to see how it would come out using all of these colors and it's really cool. I got a lot of color blending, which I really liked, and the hot pink really popped out. I used that over the rubber bands, which is why you can see that. Now we're gonna move on to a trickier design. This is how you create a heart tie-dye shape. Yes, that's right, a heart. You can use this technique to create a lot of other different shapes, but I like the heart and my toddler daughter wanted one, so that's what I started with. The supplies you're gonna need for this are the same. A white shirt, the dye, but you're also going to need a fabric marker. 
I'm using a washable fabric pen from Cricut. What that means is, is when you draw on fabric with this pen and then you add water or put in the washing machine, the ink will disappear. So just like you're in grade school and you learned how to cut out hearts, that's basically what we're going to do with the shirt. I folded the shirt vertically. So that way the center of the shirt, I can draw half of that heart on. I'm gonna use the line of the heart as a guide to do my accordion fold. It's a little tricky and you do have to get used to it because the depth and kind of tightness of your accordion folds is gonna change to keep that line straight. So if you watch the top of my line, I'm gonna gather it, excuse the blurriness here a little bit. It was focusing on my hair. So you can see I have to adjust my folds to get that line to stay a little bit more straight. And it's hard again to do with this drier shirt, but what I would normally do, unfortunately, is do it dry because if you put a washable marker on a wet shirt, it won't stay. So you can see here, see how I'm adjusting the folds? And there's my line and I'm gonna immediately rubber band that. So underneath my rubber band is basically where that heart line was and I'm gonna do that quite tight. It does take a little getting used to, so if the first couple of times you don't get it, it's totally fine. And then just like a bullseye, you're going to start at the center and keep pleating the shirt until you get a long tube that's tied off into sections. Each section, again, will create a white line, so think about how you want your final design to look. I wanted a small heart in the middle and then to go out into larger sections, and that's what I'll get by creating these larger sections of fabric. You can switch up the colors however you want. I decided to use alternate pinks and purples. I started with pink down at the tip and then worked way, way out with purples and then back to pink. Uh, we were really excited to see how this turned out. Look how awesome it is. We loved how vibrant these colors turned out. It's really beautiful. Next, we're gonna cover ice dye. This is an ice dye shirt. You can see it gives a really cool watercolor effect, and that only happens when you actually use ice to create the water instead of water mixed with dye. This is just a scrunch or crumpled up shirt that I piled high with ice, and then once the ice was on there, I took the actual powder and sprinkled it on top of the ice. As the ice melts, it combines the water with the dye and you get this really cool effect. You can see it starting to melt here, but what happens is, is the dye will actually start to separate. You actually get to see some of the origin colors of the dye that you don't get to see otherwise. Check out this color separation. That will create a really cool and unique shirt every time that is always a surprise no shirt will turn out the same and you get this really cool bleeding watercolor dyed effect that everyone thinks is really cool now those two were scrunches but you can actually do it in a shape this was a spiral shirt that i used one color of dye on that's just one color that separated it turned out really great if you guys would like some more easy diy videos i'd really appreciate it if you'd follow my channel and comment below with anything that you'd like to see i'll put all the supplies and everything that i use right below as well as the blog post that is additional information on all of these patterns thanks for watching